picking me up? It wasn't a question. It was just something experimental I did on my free time anyway. It's, it's no big deal. But you worked on it for months! Doesn't look like it matters for those people. Don't say that! Whoa. <laughs> my palm strikes the table, sending the tableware on top, clicking against each other. I didn't even notice when I rose from my seat. But here I am. Chest heaving. Looking down at him in the same manner as a teacher would at some unruly student. Becca's probably proud. I didn't mean to yell, but there are some things people like Zach shouldn't or aren't supposed to say. How exasperating. He of all people should know. It's just a review! Except they're pretty well-known critics. Why does that matter? They aren't the ones calling the shots on this. Isn't that why they have a committee? Right, Becca! An amused gleam is in her eyes when I turn to her. What does she find so entertaining here? Help me here. Your friend's about to quit his passion for a pretty re for a petty reason. I haven't read what um what those people wrote about his works, but a few scathing words shouldn't be enough to discourage someone. I should know. After all, I'm failing means you're playing, Zach. Not that I'm saying it's bad. I've seen it from start to finish, and I know for myself what you created isn't something people should scoff at. I don't know anything about filming or photography. Hell, I don't have an inkling of artistry in me except for those doodles I make for class. But I know what I watched. Look at Isabella. It's not every day you see her all riled up like this. Whatever I'm about to say gets lost in my tongue as I flush of embarrassment blooms across my face. Uh, it was a heat of the moment thing. And anyway, I'll be very angry with you if you quit. No, oh, girl, you were pretty angry. What about the exhibit? What exhibit? Classified information. Even if I bring you your favorite tonight? Nope, not a chance. Oh, come on. I thought we aren't supposed to have secrets. <laughs> a burst of laughter comes from Zach. Thanks, you two. Uh, I might need some time alone to myself for a while. Just to think about things, how I'll go from here, that sort of stuff. Hey, I'm not quitting, Bella. Don't give me that face. <laughs> There's no face at all. Sorry, guys. I mean, feels. Okay. There's no face at all, only a poor imitation of a puppy dog eyes, if you could call this one. A promise? I'll be damned if I break any promise I make to you guys. Besides, you're right, it's too early to say anything right now. What's night ain't for another week? And that's all the answer I need from him. As sentimental as it sounds, your fulfillment in knowing another person you know won't take the same path we've walked. It's not like it's over for me, though. I still have time. I could still come back. Do my own thing. Do what I really want to do. Surely once Papa recovers, once I'm done with everything. Inside of my bag, my phone buzzes unexpectedly, breaking the pleasant afternoon bell. The screen shows Rose. Hey, Isabel. You at the office? Ha ha. Very funny, Rose. I'm hanging up. <laughs> Don't. I'm kidding. BRC says the floor plan copies are ready for Miss McCullough to pick up. She states that as if it's already explains everything. Then out of the blue, she launches a long rant about the awful state of Luxburn streets. <clears throat> All of which she says in a single breath that I can barely keep up with out of a single word. 
or stay quiet if only to avoid becoming the next object of her frustration. She's similar to Becca in that regard. I'm stuck in horrendous traffic right now. Bloody stupid drivers. But she has finally ran out of things to complain about and stop. What she says next still has none of what I'm hoping to hear from her. Just a quick mumbled plea for me to, to meet the rights interior designer in her stead and... Anyway, I'll leave it to you. Bye. Thanks. Classic road. She ends the call without even asking for my input. The sky is cloudless and the noon time sun is beating down on the hard concrete when we leave the cafe. It's far from unbearable, but it's enough to put most people in a fickle mood or make them vulnerable to catching something. No wonder we have staff members going AWOL lately, not to mention my boss's miracle moods. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I want our usual cloudy weather back. For all the gripes about the unpredictable weather, though, the streets of Luxburn remain constantly busy. The hurried tapping of shoes against the pavement and inane chatter comes from the lunchtime crowd filled the humid afternoon air. A small reminder of the things we still have to do regardless of how much I want to return to the comfort of my bed. Back to Blair reality for me, Zach to a meeting with a master's magazine publisher featuring luxury houses and Becca to her lesson plans and books at home. But more than once, I catch her sneaking a longing glance over something displayed on a shop window. Does she want to buy something? Maybe I can get it for her this Christmas. I turn my head at the last shop she checked out. A fleeting glance. The world stills. She looks at me. Eyes hollow. Gaze piercing and boring to my very soul, like a set of chains to keep my whole body still. There are no shadows or whispers this time, only a plea, hum low and indistinct, compelling me, beckoning me, intent on dragging me to the void beyond the glass. I don't dare move. My heart hammers against my ribs, each beat, every thump, screaming at me to look away and make a run for it. But I can't. I couldn't. All my limbs heavy, while my own breathing strains in the face of her calls. Leave me alone. is stretching the room, wide and unpleasant. The panic building up in my chest forces me to take a tender step out. I try not to stare at the decaying flesh, the blood streaming from the gaping wounds on her arm or her nailless fingers. I don't want this. Not like this. Not after I got what I want from for Papa. No, oh, no, stop. Leave me alone. <laughs> Her face contorts and she lets out a wail. Sharp and utterly unforgiving. Rage. There's only hatred and bitterness as if the very notion of turning away from her is an offense in itself. Please! I don't want this! <coughs> Before I know it, I'm stumbling backwards, my own throat hoarse from the screen didn't even notice already coming out of my mouth. The back of my feet catches as I lose uh, on a loose stone, sending me sprawling on the ground. The resulting pain completely jolts me out of a haze blurring my mind. For a little while, my surroundings appear unfamiliar until Becca's face swims into my vision. A look of concern is on her face and her hands are gripping my arms tight. Even Zack appears besides himself with worry while he stands behind her, acting as a shield against the small crowd of onlookers already forming around us. What happened? Bella, you okay? 
My mouth opens and closes, but nothing comes out of the words. Out the words refuse to form. On impulse, I sneak a swift glance at the display window. She's gone. But the foreboding feeling hasn't left me. My hands are shaking as I push myself off the ground. My weakened limbs relying solely on reflex and muscle memory. Something icy has made its home at the pit of my stomach. I want to throw up. Anything to get the wretched sensation out. You are screaming! Zack, call someone! No, don't! I'm good. I'm good! I need... I need to get to the office. Rose, the floor plans. Someone's going to pick it up. I, I'll see you later. Be careful! Don't stand up yet! Stay put, Isabella. Zack, you watch over her for me. I'll call for... Uh, for someone! I attempt to smile her at e to put her at ease, but it will likely come off as a grimace. Currently, I push her hands off my shoulders. My knees are still trembling, but I can stand. Leave. Leave me. Stay away. Away. The media is stifling. Everyone's staring. Stares are unnervy, and Beck and Zach concerns are suffocating. I don't want to be here. No more. I break into a run. I wish I hadn't left my bed this morning. Here with only the occasional drips of water on the sink and the whirling of the fan blades to keep me company, it's easy to fall into a cycle of negative thinking. But even with the clutter to keep me company, the room still feels a whole lot bigger than usual. I hug my knees closer as a group passes by outside. Loud. So loud. If only there was a way to tone everything out to keep my head from replaying every image, every sound of her. Her screens, her awkward gait, and, her, and she reaches for me, her bone-chilling smile, her pleas for... Enough. That's enough. Shiver passes over me, though it's not from her hair still hanging damp against my back, nor the draft that enters her the room from the windows I've left wide open. My gaze shifts over the letter sitting on the toffee table, it edges fluttering incuously? In Inculously, I don't know. Incuously, I can't say the word, sorry. Ugh! In oak, innocuously, Flora, I wish you were here, innocuously, as the wind touches it. Funny how an ordinary looking piece of paper can bring this much trouble. The impulse to throw it away or rip it to pieces is still there. I can easily do it, but after what, that, what? Will she leave me or about those people who have already seen it? Will they be okay? This uncertainty gnaws at me, knowing that she's not real. It might also go after the people, or knowing that she's real, it might also go after the people I care about. I just wish someone would listen. Believe me, the abrupt break in the silence nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Finally, I fish out my phone from under the mess of papers and cushions where I've carelessly thrown it before taking a shower hours ago. Zach's name flashes brightly on the screen. Is he calling because of this afternoon? Aw, oh, Zach, you're such a sweetie. Frankly, it's the last thing I want to discuss, but I did leave the two of them there without saying anything. Knowing Zach, I bet he's worried. Hey, Zach. Oh, good. I thought for sure you're not going to pick up. Sorry, it took me a while to find my phone. No worries. You game tomorrow? I pause. I don't recall making plans with Zach for the weekend. Did I forget something? Remember that guy I told you about? Uh, back in the movies? The, uh, priest? For the blessing? Does it ring a bell? Oh, right. I did say that, but I didn't think he'd actually go through the trouble. 
especially after what happened with his film. Sometimes I forget how kind Zack can be. Yeah, I remember. Is he... is he fine with it? Now my friend doesn't mind. We're lucky he's not busy. So, tomorrow, he'll meet us at the mansion. Okay. Sorry for the trouble, Zack. Hey, no problem. I'm the one who suggested it to begin with. And, well, this afternoon you did surprise us. Never seen you scream like that. You scared the hell out of Rebecca. <laughs> I guess I owe you a lot for this, huh? Nah, <laughs> we're cool, we're cool. You had us worried. But I know you'll tell us about it eventually. I just want to make sure you're doing well. You left all of a sudden and you're not answering any of our calls. He's trying to get me to talk. Normally I tell him I'm fine, but see if those simple reassurances to put their minds at ease. Now, now nothing will form. I can't bring myself to say anything. He seems to have sensed my hesitation because he immediately changes the subject. Yeah, anyway, I gotta go. I left something on the stove before making this call. Just soup. But it'd be embarrassing if I burnt soup. I doubt it. Ashton, on the other hand... Oh, remind, <laughs> remind me to tell you about what he did with the pressure cooker next time. Oh, damn, it overflowed! Really need to get going. Bye, Bella! Oops, 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 oops. He hangs up before I can thank him. The busy tones of a muffled echoes through the receiver. No one is saying this will work. Even I am doubtful it will. But right now, I'll take anything. Anything to get out of this nightmare. Sleep comes easier tonight. And for the time, first time in a long time, I dream. Of clear skies, of unrestrained laughter from children playing in the streets, and of small, camp cramped dwellings. To an outsider, the sight does not paint a pretty picture. However, this is home to me. Okay, you guys, I'm in the episode here. In the meantime, you guys have a spoopy month. And we will continue the letter. I'm catching up and then I'm going to edit the other stuff. I don't know if I'll be able to post all of this this month, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, till next time, you guys. Bye.